Today, you will learn how to use Grasshopper to construct these extremely complex columns from the Shanghai metro station. You will discover various methods we use including Bezier curve, tangent curves, three-point arcs and even Galapagos to optimize the initial shape of the columns. Let's get started. Hi guys, Lazar here and the base geometry in this tutorial is inspired by the project Shanghai Subway Line 14 Yuyuan Station designed by the studio Xing Design. First we'll define a point. It will be used as the origin of base plane for the rectangle located on XY plane. In order to create X and Y rectangle dimensions we'll use construct domain. The dimension we choose needs to be divided by 2 so we can create domain in order to use defined point at the center of the rectangle. Once we create domain for the X dimension, the same logic will be applied to Y dimension. Based on these two sliders, we can modify the rectangle. In the next step, I'm going to explode and extract single point with index one and multiply along Z direction. The idea is to create a conic curve. Basically, once you multiply them vertically, then points needs to move along Y direction based on graph mapper and connect them in order to create curve. For that we need equally distributed point generated with range component within domain from 0 to 4 where 4 represents the height. The more points you have the more precise result will be. Now I'm going to create a conic curve within graph mapper component and based on it the points will be moved along x direction. But first let's create the same number of values equally distributed within 0 to 1 then remap with graph mapper and remap once again within another domain. After we get the values they will be used as an amplitude for vectors along x direction and connecting the points curve will be created. Now we need to modify the curve by adding more contour points in order to get horizontal upper part of it. It can be done by adding more highest values at the end of the list which means more points will be positioned at the same z coordinate. In our case it's number 4 so it will be duplicated several times and added to original list. Modified list of numbers will be placed into unit z component. You can see that we have 3 points overlapping at the height of 4. Also, I will add another domain that will define the unit X amplitudes. So, these two leads should have the same number of items, but currently the bottom one has 44 and the top one has 46, as I added two more values. In order to match list length, I will sum the initial number of items with the number of items that we duplicated, which is 46. We can sum them with expression X plus 1. This is how we managed to get horizontal upper part of the curve. In the next step the curve will be mirrored using YZ plane, then vertical lines will be created from their ends and will connect in order to get closed curve. First I will find the end point of the curve and use it as a starting point of vertical line with a length of 0.4. Then I will merge these two curves in the same list and join them. Now I will take initial point and use it as the origin of YZ plane and place it in the mirror component so we can get the right position of the mirror curve. In order to connect them properly, one of the curves need to be flipped. After that, I merge them in the same list and place in the connect curve component. Continuity blend needs to be set to zero. In the next few steps, we'll focus on the geometry created from the top view. First, I will copy the rectangle along X direction, then create the arc, mirror it, and generate the region between them. After that, it will be extruded vertically and previously created curve will be extruded horizontally along Y direction. Using solid intersection will get the first phase of the column that needs to be developed later in Rhino. I will take the rectangle and move along X direction. Vector amplitude will be based on the end of the target domain that we used to move points previously. We'll multiply that value and add X dimension on the rectangle. The result will be placed in the unit X. In the next step, I will create the line connecting the rectangle corner from each side. Then middle point of the line will be moved along the negative y direction and based on these two points, the arc will be constructed. After arc will be mirrored. Let's explode the rectangle and extract point with the index 0. Then create the line based on these two points, extract middle point of the line and move along reversed y direction. I will use arc sed component to create an arc, so we need these two points as start and end point, and tangent at start point will be reversed x vector. 
Next, the arc will be mirrored using YZ plane with the region at the middle of the line. Once again, we need to place two arcs into single list and join them creating one curve that will be mirrored using XZ plane with the region at initial curve. And again, in order to connect them properly, one of the curves need to be flipped. After that, I merge them in the same list and place in the connect curve component. Continuity blend needs to be set to zero. Alright, now we'll take the first curve we generated and use the same amplitude to move along positive and negative y direction. These two curves will create the polysurface using the loft component and we can cap the holes to get a close B wrap. Next, I will take arc base curve and extrude along z direction, cap this one as well to get another close B wrap. Now I will use solid intersection to find the shape that these two volumes share. Generated geometry will be mirrored using YZ plane with the region at initial point and I will place them in two separate branches. This represents the first phase of the column that will be developed later in Rhino. Alright, in the next step we need to create a surface that will be used to split the column developed in Rhino. The red curve represents the final one we want to get. In order to construct it, we need to offset the arc, then extract segment of the rectangle, move its middle point along minus y direction and create another smaller arc using a middle point and another point on the larger arc. After it will be mirrored using YZ plane. Ok, so let's take the arc that we previously created and offset it by 0.2. Then I'm going to extract middle point of the rectangle segment and move it along negative y direction. It will be used as one of the arc ends. Another one will be point on the offset curve. Once we extract the segment of the rectangle with index 0, we need its middle point. For that I will use a valid curve. The input will be 0.5 and don't forget to reparameterize curve. Using the same logic we need to find the point on offset arc the parameter will be defined later using Galapagos. But before that I need to extend the offset arc as it should touch the rectangle. Once the curve is extended it needs to be trimmed with horizontal line. I will use SDL component to construct the line along x direction, its start will be at initial point. Now I will use curve intersects with a curve or CCX shortcut in order to find intersection point on both curves with their curve parameters that we actually need. That curve parameter I will use to place in the shatter component and extract only one segment of the arc. This is the arc from which one point will be extracted. Once we get both points I will merge them in the same list, don't forget to flatten the list and place into interpolate component that requires interpolation points and also tangent at start and tangent at end of curve. Once we get the curve, precise point on curve needs to be generated with evolutionary solver Galapagos. So we need to generate the maximum length of the curve that doesn't intersect with offset arc two times. If it does, the result will be rejected. So we need to generate the curve with a single intersection with the arc. That's why I will find intersection points, calculate least length and keep only outputs with result 1. You can see if I change the slider in the output will be 2. It means I'm going to test if the result is equal to 1. True and false values should be converted to integer numbers getting 1 and 0. If the result is equal to 1, multiply 1 with curve length. If not, multiply with 0. The value we get should be connected with fitness as it needs to reach its maximum. The genome is a slider that defines where point is located on the curve. By double click we can open Galapagos Aether. You can leave the settings by default and click on start solver. Wait a few seconds to calculate and click OK. You don't need to wait until it's finished. Once the curve parameter is generated, it will be also used to split the curve as we need only one segment that will be joined with a smaller arc. Once again, shatter component will be used, don't forget to reparameterize curve and extract segment with the index 0. It should be merged in the same list with the smaller arc and join them into single curve. Now I will mirror it using YZ plane with origin at initial point, original and mirror curve will be joined into single one. I just noticed that I forgot to move middle point of the rectangle segment along a negative y direction. So let's first move this part on the right, take move component and in the translational vector place reversed unit z and set 0.02 as amplitude. I will run Galapagos once again as we modify the curve. In the final steps we need to extrude curve along z direction and mirror it using xz plane. Once we get all geometries that we need we can bake them and develop the shape in Rhino. Once we bake them, I will hide these two surfaces. Then we need to extract and delete selected faces of the columns. 
In the next step, I will extract the edge using dupe edge command, select it and project on YZ plane using set point command. In the menu keep only X checked. Let's move it on the side and rebuild curve. Point count can be 90. Now I will extend curve, turn on control points and move the top one along minus Y direction. In the next step I will extrude the curve along X direction. Created surface should have the same width as the column. Now let's copy it on the side as we'll need it later on. Using the same value the arc is offset, I'm going to extrude these two vertical edges. Then I will extrude this guy along X direction to connect with the other. Once again I will use dupe edge to extract edges that will be used to split extruded surface. Once the curves are extracted they will be joined into single curve. After that type split, select object to split which is extruded surface and split with joint edges and delete unnecessary parts. Then join these guys, mirror them, then join with the rest surfaces of the column and cap the holes. You can also merge coplanar faces. It's time to unhide surfaces, type boolean split, select the column, press enter, then select these two guys as a cutting surfaces and execute command. Once you split the column we can delete unnecessary parts. Here you can see how the column looks. Alright, let's place the surface back, select and extract these two edges, use again a set point, but this time only keep set Z checked in order to project the curves on XY plane. Type twin curves, select them and press enter. Once you get the curves, I will rebuild them, delete the first one and project them on the surface. Then they will be placed on the separate layer and delete the rest. In the last step, projected curves will be extruded along Z direction, set the base point and extrude them to the top of the column and mirror them on the other side. This is how single model is created, which can be multiplied in both directions. And let's take a look at the final results. In this tutorial we used both Grasshopper and Rhino to create our geometry, however, in the extended version of this tutorial we'll show you how to complete the whole project only in Grasshopper, making it fully parametric. The only input you will have is a single point from which the whole project will develop. You'll be able to change the number of columns, their shape and the curvature of the ceiling. On top of that, you will get exclusive access to all our extended tutorials and project files from YouTube. The link is in the description. If you'd like to know exactly how to create complex projects like these, and if you're interested in step-by-step -step learning approach starting from zero, make sure to check our Grasshopper Complete course, where you'll find over 60 hours of video material structured in a form of video library, covering in depth more than 500 Grasshopper components through practical examples. And you'll have access to us personally, so we can answer all of your questions right away. The link is in the description.